I'm going to go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. I want to talk about sexual morality. You know, having sex outside of marriage is fornication. The reason I bring this up is because I, I noticed that today I was on social media and I saw a coworker of mine and he posted that he loves God above all things, yet he lives with his girlfriend. And there was a, a gal that we used to go to church with um, who went through divorce and now she's living with her boyfriend. And it just seems that, that, that everywhere I look, I see so-called Christians shagging up. Um, having sex outside of marriage and boy i mean is this stuff not addressed do they not know or, or, or are they just ignoring god but I, I shared that with my daughter to this morning and i'm like you need to understand that sex outside of marriage is sin and and let's see what god says about it you know because in america it's totally okay today in america it is totally fine for a couple to move in together you know have babies and everyone accepts you. You're fine. I mean, and expect, you know, you can come to church. No problem. Attend. I mean, you can even attend premarital classes and you're living in together in churches. Right, right, Daryl? I mean, exactly. it's gone that bad where it's being accepted. It's become normal. But I want, I want to show you guys, you know, our, our little Bible study is called What Does the Bible Say? So what does the Bible say about fornication and fornicators? First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. But focus there, the very first one, neither fornicators will inherit the kingdom of God. Look, it doesn't matter that you profess Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter that you have a, you know, that, that you have stickers on your car that say you're a Christian. It doesn't matter that you're a member of a church. It doesn't matter that you got baptized. It doesn't matter that you said a prayer and that you said it a million times. It doesn't matter that you memorize the Bible. If you're fornicating, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you're practicing fornication, because verse 11 then says, and such were, past tense, such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. See, coming to Christ, we mentioned 2 Corinthians 5.17, if <clears throat> Christ is a new creation. You know, if I was a fornicator, now that I'm in Christ, I'm no longer a fornicator. There's redemption for all who repent. There's forgiveness of sin for all who repent. If you call yourself a Christian and you're fornicating, you need to repent. Either get married or stop committing fornication. Because if you continue in this lifestyle, it ends in hell. It says you will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's what the Bible says. So uh, the next verse I wanted to share was John 14. John 14, 23 and 24. Look what Jesus says here. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. Verse 24. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you heard is not mine, but the father who sent me. Jesus is saying, Jesus is here saying, look, these are not my words. These are God's words. If you love me, you're going to obey me. If you don't love me, you don't obey me. So there's no way you can be a Christian and practice fornication. The truth is, you don't love Jesus. I don't care that you go to church every Sunday. You don't love Jesus because you're not obeying his command. And his command is for you to be sanctified. In fact, it's God's will that you be sanctified and abstain from sexual morality. That's in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. So bottom line, fornication, fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God. Was it Peter or Paul that talked about um, increasing in the knowledge and in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ? I'm not sure that's that. But you recognize the, the yeah. verse, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, to me, 
that's absolutely going to be the the priority of the believer um at the very beginning of the time that you were born again you needed somebody to <clears throat> disciple you because you you probably weren't reading your bible every day mm-hmm. right on day one right Right. You probably weren't getting up early in the morning before everybody else <laughs> starting your day the right way, you know, the way Jesus did, the way David did. Um, but if someone is born again, as time goes by and as the years go by, you're going to increase in the knowledge of God's word. Yes. You're going to want to do what he says. You're going to want to share it with people. You're going to want to warn people. Hey, look, it says in God's word that that people who do these things are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Um, I shared those same things with, you know, with my daughters. Um, so when you, you know, when you were going through all that and you were talking about these real world examples, I, I was, I was kind of thinking, well, you know, maybe some people are ignorant. Okay, fine. They need to be told, mm-hmm. you know, but but then I started thinking, well, but, but if, if someone is born again, um, maybe, maybe it just happened for some people, but you would think at a certain point that they would say, hey, I want to know what God's word says. I want to see if the way I'm living lines up with his word. If it's not, I don't want, last thing I want to do is grieve him, you know? So, and I, we can't, we can't do second Corinthians five seventeen enough, you know? That's, I think that's, that's really going to be the proof, right? And then Galatians 5, of course. So are you, are you, are you Galatians 5.19 or are you Galatians 5.22? You know, so. Well, they don't know a lot of times it's because it's not being preached. Right. And they're not reading the word. So that's, you can't uh, make an excuse. Well, nobody told me. Because you've got the book here, and you can, uh, you know, read it. I mean, now they're making a, you know, it's all the news making a big deal about, uh, you know, that, oh, it's not fair, you know, vaccine for monkeypox. <clears throat> you know, and they clearly state it's because men having sex with men. And so, I mean, I don't want anybody to die, no, but I mean, it's like, so are we supporting that? You know, you know, some people think, oh, it's just violating their rights. They should have vaccines. And yeah, well, maybe they should stop having sex with men. That's what you should be doing, you know. Um, and they just say it like it's, you know, the, you know, like it's nothing. You know, it's like in the news, like, oh, well, you get the disease for because men are having sex with men. And they should have a picture like 100 men in line. <laughs> Stand in line to get this vaccine, wow. and it's like ah, something's not right there. It's like it's a get out of jail free card. Yeah, you know, it's like this. You know, it's like you know, standing for a flu shot. You know, mm-hmm. you know, you can get the flu just by walking around. How do you get this monkeypox? You know, uh, the, the, the quality of the Christian will be measured on what sin do they find acceptable? And the answer is no sin is acceptable. Right. I mean, we, we wouldn't have to have had a, a, a Christ Savior suffer so much to, to uh, cover all those sins. Why, why would we want to put him through any more? Why would we sin any more? You know, and um, to say living with someone out of wedlock is acceptable. You know, having sex with someone of the same sex is acceptable. You know, lying, cursing, stealing, cheating, murdering, stealing, all those things, they're all sin. They're all sinful. And um, is a Christian willing to tell another person that sin is unacceptable? Are, Are we as Christians willing to tell another believer that what they're doing is not right? Not because we're better than them, but because we're all sinful and because God is not going to go easy on our sin. He will tell us every single thing we've done wrong. We will know. We will hear it all. If we if we're truly going to get acceptance into heaven, we'll find out everything we've done wrong, right? We believe what the word says. Scripture tells us. So why are we going to let our believers, fellow brothers and sisters, why would we let them suffer anymore and continue even further down a wrong path instead of asking them to go into into repentance and go to God and ask them for forgiveness? 
no, no one is too far gone, right? We 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 saw that there. That was the pastor's you know service. But if you continuously choose sin, you're accepting that you don't want God, that you don't want His salvation. You want to choose sin. And we shouldn't be easy on sin. We shouldn't take it lightly. God's not going to. That's all I wanted to add to that. Yes. One is the true repentant never done this kinds of uh, fornications and everything. Because if we see that First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirits of God, for they are fullness of to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. That those who practice fornication and everything, they all are natural men. According to this, but Corinthians chapter one, chapter two, verse 14. And then as just now we see that Peter, he uh, promoted the one is increased, right? By the grace, we have increased in his grace. Acknowledge our Lord Jesus Christ. Because if we are really repentant, if we are really true Christian, we have to grow in His grace and knowledge our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, there is no um, fear of the Lord. If you feared God, you would want to do things. You wouldn't want to offend God. Yeah, so that's that's uh, you wouldn't want to do those things. We have fear of the Lord. I think that's one of the great scriptures, and I, I'm glad that Brother Thang brought it up because often um, we might say that we don't understand why somebody is doing something. Um, all we have to do is look at that scripture, right? Why, why, doesn't, why can't he just get it? Why doesn't she just get it? Look, you know, that uh, the world is sinful, <clears throat> um, and they don't, you know, they don't accept the things of the spirit of God because they don't have the capacity to do it. You know? 